here at Formula Botanica. My name is Ken. I'm the head of education. And with me today, let's see if I do it the right way today, is the lovely this way. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Eliza. I'm the tutor uh, at Formula Botanica. I, I grade papers and I'm also at the forum uh, answering questions uh, for all our students who may require assistance. <laughs> Thank you, Eliza. And Eliza, where uh, are you at the moment? I'm in Malaysia, and in Malaysia. it is about 10 p.m. right now where I am. Okay. Actually, I have, a, I have a big clock here. See if you can see. It is. Okay. There yeah. you <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and I'm at the moment in Dubai, and it is, it is 6 p.m. here. Um, maybe in the chat box to all our viewers, if you can let us know where you're logging in from. It's always nice to see where our community is from, where you're watching from. And um, by the way, if you are not able to stay online the entire live session because it is early morning for you or late at night for you, uh, then don't worry, the recording will be available later on in, in the stream as well. So the recording will be accessible for you later on. Don't worry about it too much. So we have already... Um, Tamlin from South Africa, we will have, well, I'm sure it's a, a company account, but Winter Solstice in Alaska, and it's 5 a.m. there, and you're already up, wow. Uh, we got Canada, Ontario, we got Cornwall, UK, and uh, good morning to you, good afternoon, <laughs> good evening to you. Um, you all tuned in to see our uh, introduction to formulation, and that's what we'll be covering today. Um, for those of you who are just logging in or that came across um, this session by accident because it flagged up while you were logging into your social media. So here at Formula Botanica, we're very excited to open up our enrollment to courses next week, Tuesday on the 26th of January. You will be able to enroll for our fantastic courses. Um, that's when it will open and enrollment will stay open for one week. So it will stay open until the 2nd of February, which is the Tuesday after. Um, so we have a series of sessions throughout uh, the next couple of days for you to familiarize yourselves with uh, with the courses and who we are and what we do. And um, I'm sure you've seen some of the activities in the last couple of days. And today is all about introduction to formulation. Um, and the reason I think why, why we really wanted to cover this is because if you are a beginner, um, especially, um, you might think I need to set up with lots of expensive equipment and lots of expensive ingredients in order to get started with formulating. And well, let me ask Eliza, what do you think? Do you need to invest a lot in order to get started? Or what, what, is, the real, what is the real scenario here? If you just get started with formulating, what, what do you need? Is it a, yeah. Um, no, actually, you don't need uh, many expensive equipments. Um, what you need to do is basically go to your kitchen and then you can start picking out things that can work when you start to formulate. <laughs> yes. What do you use that for, Ken? I will tell you later what I'm using this for. <laughs> when I whip some magic things up, I will use this, but I'll tell you later. <laughs> Yes, um, it, it can be as simple as a spoon um, or anything that you can find in the kitchen, which we will run through with you as, as this session goes along. Yes, that's your infamous chopsticks. <laughs> yes. So, yes, so as Eliza said, um, when you just get started, started with formulating, um, it's a very common question we get from students is, do I need to invest a lot of money in getting equipment and getting utensils and getting ingredients? And uh, we want to show you or talk you through kind of what kind of ingredients we use for formulation and why we use plant-based ingredients and, and what they are and what they do in a product. So we'll talk about ingredients first. I believe it's probably the first half of the session. And then after that, we will talk about equipment uh, and how you can start off quite inexpensive. And then obviously as your development as your production grows over time, you would slowly and gradually scale up. But in the beginning, there is no need to spend a lot of money. Um, I think in the beginning, you will spend more time in researching and trialing than anything else, but you won't spend money, but time. Um, so let's talk about ingredients first. And by the way, um, if you have any questions throughout this um, session, please feel free 
to type them in the chat box and we will try to get to all of them um, hopefully throughout the, the next hour or so. Um, if we don't manage, we'll try and get back to you. Uh, usually in the beginning it's quiet and then at some point everyone asks a lot. So let's see, let's see how it goes, but we will try to answer them all. Um, so Eliza, let's talk about ingredients. What What is kind of the first type of ingredient you would, you would want to highlight to our students or prospective students? Before I get into that, there's mm -hmm. somebody who in the in the comments said that they can't hear us. They can't um, hear us. Hmm. Can I just get um, someone from Formula Botanica? Can you confirm if you can hear us? Um, if you can hear us, can you just give us a thumbs up or a yes in the comments right now? Yes. Just to make sure that it's not, maybe it's only one person that can't hear us. Uh, okay. Then, then the one person, you can refresh the page yeah if you maybe want to refresh the page or uh, okay, okay. So sandy can hear us which is yes. good and sad also thank, thank you thank you um so whoever cannot hear us there's no point in explaining this actually because we can't <laughs> hear us but i wanted to say you can log off and log back on but um yes. i guess you can't hear it <laughs> um so okay. maybe someone of our from our team can comment uh, back to you <laughs> yes <laughs> okay, okay great. Go, go ahead <laughs> okay um ingredients um well, here we we want you to be able to experience um, making a fantastic product that is suitable for yourself. Um, what works for me may not work for you. What works for Ken may not work for you either. So understanding ingredients are very important. So in the courses that we have for you, or rather our diploma foundation, we talk about simple uh, ingredients like... Um, what kind of oils, what kind of uh, water phase that you, you can use. And um, to make up of this whole formula, we have broken them down into different uh, sections um, and to make it easier for you to be able to see how you can actually create a fantastic formula. Mm -hmm. So we can start off with um, the foundation, which is actually the base of the whole formula. Mm -hmm. This foundation can go from as little as 20% uh, right up to 100%. It really depends on the type of formula that you want to create. So if you want to create, for example, um, a toner, mm -hmm. you can use maybe hydrosols, 100% uh, um, directly from the supplier and you can just use it as your toner. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to create um, a balm for your skin, whether it's your hands or your feet, um, you can use shea butter. Uh, or you can use mango butter, depending on where you are, um, whichever that you feel that is suitable for your skin. It can go right up to even 100%, just one ingredient by itself. So because of this, you need to know what works and what not. And for me personally, um, I like to mix and match the foundation yeah. um, in any formula. Um, so do you have a favorite, Ken, that you like to use um, yes, so for for foundation product, uh, foundation ingredients, I like to work with different oils um, because I think that you can, if you make, for example, an oil-based serum, and you will you will talk about the other um, uh, ingredients later. But as a as a main uh, foundation ingredient, what I love to use, for example, is jojoba oil, um, which is technically a liquid wax. But from my skin, if I formulate for myself. I've quite, got quite oily combination skin. I find it very, very nice. Um, it doesn't leave any grease film or anything, any products where this is majority in it. feels really nice on my skin um, and, and just really lovely. Um, I love to work with um, raspberry seed oil, um, with pomegranate seed oil. So I, I like the different kinds of oils. And I can show you, but it doesn't really look like anything because it is in a bottle. So uh, <laughs> you don't get any, you can't really see anything. Um, but what I like with, with the oils um, is, and this is when you start formulating, it's very interesting. So I think um, for me, when I started with formulating, the first thing is we obviously have some materials in our courses where, for example, we will talk about um, rosehip oil and the benefits of it. Yeah then you will get, depending where you buy your, in this example, rosehip oil from, you will get certain information from your suppliers where they have recommended usage in terms of, um, you know, 
and what products to use and how to use it, to what percentage, those sort of things. But then what I find very important, other than the paper research, is actually when you get the products, open it, smell it. Um, if it is a product like a carrier oil would be, that is safe enough to use directly on your skin, a carrier oil is, give it a try and see what is actually the skin feel like. How does it absorb on your skin? What is the, 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 the feel after? Does it just feel very greasy or oily? Or does it absorb very quickly? What is the scent profile of it? And, and these are all important things to keep in mind when you formulate because, for example, if you read up the benefits of, um, what did I have the other day? For example, Tamanu oil is a very lovely oil. Um, but I didn't quite like the scent or maybe one that most of you may know is neem oil, very great oil, but a very strong scent profile. So if I just do a paper-based formulation, I read up all the benefits, I'll be like, oh yeah, neem oil is great to formulate with. Let me put 50% of neem oil in my serum. I don't know who would use that serum because it wouldn't be me because of the scent. Um, so it's always very important to always give it a try. And by try, I mean, try and involve different senses as long as it's safe, just to really get to know the, the ingredient that you have, and then you start experimenting. So then you may use your different oils, and this is rosehip, and this is raspberry, and you try to see what happens if I mix them together. How does it feel different on my skin? Now I've got both benefits of one oil, right? Because you, because you said earlier, I could use this to 100%, which is great. But now if I bring my raspberry, and they look the same, but they're not, I promise. <laughs> and if we now bring the raspberry oil in, and I make, for example, 50-50, or I've got the two of them and something else. Obviously, the skin benefits and the skin feel of this product and the scent profile will have changed completely already. So I think I think that's what I love about formulating is there's endless opportunities and possibilities of what to create and how to create it. It's just there is no stopping in terms of creativity. And you know what I received today? And it already looks messy because the bottle exploded on me. Um, I got blackberry seed oil and uh, the supplier was very generous because they filled it up all the way which i didn't expect so i opened it and squeezed at the same time and um if, if my skin looks oily it's because it just happened before discussion and i just I put it everywhere so <laughs> i didn't want yes. to waste it. um <laughs> yeah, that's what you'll see if, I, if there's any shine <laughs> okay so <laughs> foundation, you mentioned uh, sorry you mentioned the hydrosols and you mentioned the the carrier oils right and the butter yes. um yes. You There's mentioned mango one. butter. I love mango butter. Me too. Um, I think it's very easy to work with. It's a very lovely butter. It's not too uh, it's not too greasy, and, and the skin it's quite for my skin at least it absorbs quite nicely. Doesn't make a product too heavy, um, and it's quite neutral as well in, in scent. Usually, it's not as strong. For example, shea butter that you mentioned has a very strong scent profile, right? It's quite uh, yes. uh, quite distinct, whereas mango butter I think doesn't really have that, so it's quite nice. Yeah. Yes. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is that um, under the foundation, you can also mm -hmm. use water, distilled mm. water, um, as part of the foundation build up, especially when you're doing emulsions or toners or anything, um, or any formula for that matter. But I want to touch something uh, in, mm -hmm. in case this might, might interest some, some people. Um, where I am, because I'm in a tropical country, um, my coconut oil is actually in liquid. Mm -hmm. so, let me just show you. It's liquid. But no. there are some people who has their coconut oil, which is in solid form. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what they did was they, they actually formulate something with the coconut oil, which mm -hmm. is like a, a balm-like. And I had a friend who actually did this. It was a very, very funny story. And she was raving about how nice the balm is. So when she sent it to me and she put it in a jar and when I opened it, 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 you know, kind of like what you experienced, it kind of mm. like spilled all over the place and became liquid. So again, when you, when you start formulating with us, you will learn to know that how the ingredients behave differently at different mm. uh, countries, uh, their weather and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really good point, actually. Yeah. Um, I had that as well. I made a body balm bars, which by the way, we teach in our diploma in organic skincare formulation. It's a really lovely formulation, really lovely product, especially when you travel because you don't have to worry about spillage of bottles of body oils or anything like that. But you have to keep in mind, so I formulated it in, uh, I'm usually based in Amsterdam where it's quite cold. Um, so I used a very low wax percentage in the product. Uh, so it melts, the idea is it melts on, on touch with body heat, with your skin heat, and then you can apply the product quite nicely on the skin. 
worked beautifully in Amsterdam. And then I brought it here to Dubai to for friends to trial. And it was the same thing. They just had it lying in the in the bathroom, not even in the sun or anything, just in the bathroom because it's hotter here. The the balm just melted right away. Basically, I needed to use a lot more wax here, um, for example. So that's a very good point. You will you will learn the trial and error. You will learn from from research, and that's how you improve your your products that you create. Um, um, the entire time. I have a question here from from Liam, and just because you just mentioned coconut oil, uh, let me pull this question up. Um, and Liam is asking, what is the difference between 100% virgin coconut oil, fractionated coconut oil, and capric triglyceride, which is better in creams? Good question. You can, Liam. Yeah, you can use any of them mm -hmm. because each of them has their own um, benefits. But I would say fractionate coconut oil, fractionated coconut oil, um, it has gone through a, a, another process, a chain process of mm -hmm. um, taking out the scent. I, I think I, I can't remember what's the chain name of the chain called. Uh, you you don't get the smell of mm -hmm. coconut uh, versus if you use the, the hundred percent virgin coconut oil, you get the lovely coconut smell, but not in fractionated coconut mm -hmm. oil. Um, I have not actually used. Capric triglyceride, have you, Ken? No, me neither. I have used both the virgin coconut oil and fractionated. Um, so I think which is better, it depends on, you said creams, but it, I think it depends on what consistency do you want. Um, yep. What do you want with that cream? So basically, like we mentioned, the virgin coconut oil, that's the one that's usually, that can go from solid to liquid, right, depending on the temperature. Yes. And depending on where, on the manufacturer, on the manufacturer where it's produced, um, the scent can vary a lot. It's very coconutty in general, but the scent itself, the scent profile can be from very strong to light coconut kind of. Whereas the fractionated, like Eliza mentioned, uh, the scent is, I don't think it's actually smells like anything. It's, I think no. it's neutral if no I remember smell. correctly. And it's yeah. liquid, it's always liquid. So it has gone through some processing. Um, so that depends on what kind of formulation you want to make. So obviously if you would use the virgin coconut oil, automatically you have a scent profile in your cream. Uh, and it also means if you are in a colder um, climate um, country, that your product would be thicker automatically through that. So you, if you want a thinner cream, that means that you would need to compensate this virgin coconut oil with something else that's thinner in consistency. Yeah. Or if you're in a, then exporting this into a warmer country, you need to keep in mind that then the product might liquefy or even um, maybe become unstable depending on what it is that you're producing, right? So. But it's actually a typical, you know, typical question that you start asking yourself when you start formulating, right? Because you get uh, this information about different ingredients, and then you think, hmm, which is bitter, uh, bitter, better, <laughs> this one or this one? And 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 that's exactly yes. what you need to keep in mind: what product are you making? Where are you making it? Where does it go to? What effect do you want to have? Is there different benefits to the different versions of this ingredient? And which benefits do you want, or do you feel are more beneficial for your product? Maybe you want to use both and a combination of it. For yes. example, yeah. It's possible. Yeah. Yep. So okay. Thank you for the question, Liam. Keep them coming. Um, Any more, or shall we move on there's to one the from next Greg. one? Greg, um, can you use local spring water instead of distilled water, or does the different mineral profile affect the formulas? It does. It really does, because distilled water basically is a I would say purified water. You don't get any minerals inside. And this is very important, especially when you want to formulate an emulsion, mm -hmm. where you don't want the minerals in the water to be disturbing the other ingredients mm -hmm. at the end of the product. So I would recommend that if you have your local spring water, you need to check whether um, is it really free of the minerals. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know or not. But we have a really good blog post on distilled water, if somebody can help to put the link there, mm -hmm. um, it will be able to, you will be able to know more about the differences of okay. the types of water. Good, thank you. Okay. Um, so Eliza, did we cover all the foundation ingredients or is there anything else or is there, do we move to the next one? No, I, I think we can move on to the next mm -hmm. one. Okay. Um, we can do functionals. Okay, functionals. Um, functionals, basically, it means um, what does the ingredient actually do in the product? Mm -hmm. What is the role that it does? Um, you can talk about, let's say, um, emulsifiers, mm -hmm. uh, where it is used to bind the oil and water together. Mm 
Uh, or you can say humectants, mm -hmm. where you, you know you put, let's say, for glycerin, yeah. it's, it's a, one of the humectants. It is actually meant for uh, moisturizing, hydrating, that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, what else? Scrub bits. When you want to make scrub, yeah. So you you put the tiny. Um, what I like to use is the jojoba bits, mm -hmm. um, very tiny microns, and they are very gentle on the face. So mm -hmm. those are functionals where it is meant to do something in the formula that you create. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? I haven't um, uh, worked with jojoba bits actually. I have them. Uh, because I wanted to try it, but I haven't worked with them. So you just reminded me that I have to make something with them because I haven't tried them yet. They moved to the back of my cupboard. <laughs> oh, take them out. They are lovely oh, to yeah. use, really, yes. <laughs> um, someone was asking... Um, the question is gone. I will find it. I will find it again. Keep going, Eliza. I will find the question. Okay. I'll it up later. Um, well, that's the thing. You know, I, I wanted to also mention, while we have these categories, whether it's foundations, whether mm -hmm. it's functionals, and we're going to come on with a few more categories, um, there is a very thin line how we categorize these ingredients. Um, because sometimes they, they can be functionals, and sometimes they could also be part of the foundation. Mm -hmm. So it also depends on how you want to create a formula. So just keep that in mind, you know, because as we go along, you might be thinking, um, why is it categorized like this and not, mm. not the earlier one? So as, let's see if I can find some um, examples to, to yeah. share with you. So after functional, shall we, shall we move on to the actives? Yeah, let's move on to actives. What are active ingredients? Okay. So actives or what we call active botanicals mm -hmm. um, is, is the ingredients that we add in uh, from plant extracts and um, it can be from uh, what the supplier is selling, uh, mm -hmm. any form of plant extracts, or you can even do your own extracts by doing oil maceration. Uh -huh. um, so which means that if you, if you like calendula, if, uh, like for me, um, I, I have a little girl, five-year-old, you know, she has very mm -hmm. sensitive skin. So I like to macerate uh, calendula herbs in jojoba oil. Mm -hmm. I just leave it for about three weeks. And then I use that um, to make creams and lotions for her. So it's very soothing, um, especially when you have rashes or any uh, irritation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really good for the skin. Oh, nice. So uh, these are the actives that, that is available yeah. to you. And you will learn more uh, as, as you come on board with us. Mm -hmm. um, yes, there's one more thing which I wanted to say. When you buy an active from the supplier, always, always make sure to read the recommended usage by the supplier. Um, if they say maximum 0 0.5, don't go beyond 0 0.5 because all this have been tested and um, they would recommend the best dose for you to use mm -hmm. because sometimes more doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. Better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's funny that you mentioned calendula because I've got calendula here as well. Um, ah. And you mentioned actives, so... Um, I had a couple of friends that were complaining about from all the hand sanitizers that the hands, the hands are getting very dry, right? So I made yes. um, a hand cream for them and I actually used um, macerated calendula oil and Ooh, I used nice. um, calendula extract in there as well and chamomile and they love the cream. Like all of them, they, they are, uh, it's a night cream so you apply it in the evening and they all love it. So um, it's amazing what you can, can work in, you know, with, with ingredients oh, yes. actually for, um, you know, for different needs of, of your customers or for yourself even, because you can tailor the products as to what you want to create, right? So um, you mentioned, for example, for your daughter, you're making your own, um, or you can obviously, if you want to start your own brand, you will look at what is your customer target? What kind of products do you want to create? Is it something for men only? Is it for people, um, you know, that have a certain need for their skin because they are in a certain age group or is it something so what problem does it solve basically for the customer right and based on that you start you start um, exploring and experimenting and researching and there's just so much you can do with botanical um, ingredients with plant ingredients it's amazing um there, there was one question and i found it again and um it's this one here 
um, from Barry Tund. I'm not sure if I'm saying this name correctly. I'm really sorry if I don't. Um, but uh, you're asking if there's a list of ingredients to buy before the classes start, and where is the list to look at for the diploma class? So um, we do have a list of ingredients um, for a diploma in organic, organic skincare formulation also for the diploma in organic care, care formulations. We do have a list of ingredients that you will require to complete all the formulations that we are going through in the course. Um, we also have created to make it easier for you uh, a starter kit in cooperation with Nasons and maybe one of our colleagues, I believe Kelly is online, if you could post the link to the Nason starter kit in there. Um, they ship to most countries in the world. If your country is not listed there, please uh, write them an email and check. They might be able to make some special arrangements for you. Um, they sell a Formula Botanica starter kit. So if you are planning on enrolling into the Diploma in Organic Skincare Formulation, this starter kit will contain all the essential um, ingredients that you will require in order to complete our frame formulations um, for the course. Um, and that is enough to get you started, for example. Um, however, we can also send you a list um, if you just if you would uh, write an email to hello at formulabotanica.com and you can ask for the ingredients list for the course, we can send it to you um, and then you can start shopping. But also once you purchase the course, once you get course access, it will also be in the course. Um, so you don't need to buy it beforehand. There is still time once you have enrolled uh, to then make that step and purchase your products. Um, Nasons is one of our partners that we work with. You don't have to go through Nasons. There is a ton of suppliers out there in yes. the world. And when you enroll for our courses also, you will have access to our worldwide supplier guide. It's 33 pages of suppliers all over the world uh, yes. to all continents. Uh, I am very sure you will be able to find what you need from those suppliers. It may just require a little bit of research in the beginning, but once you have figured out who your suppliers are in the part of the world that you're at, uh, you will go back to them over and over again. And I think with that, I have also answered a question that was in there about um, suppliers that someone else has um, asked earlier. Yeah. Okay. So um, thanks for all the links, Kelly, by the way. Um, Greg was asking, Eliza, did you say you used calendula hops? Uh, no, uh, I think I mentioned calendula herbs. Herbs. Sorry. Herbs. I need herbs. to Not improve hops. on my pronunciation. So it's herbs. I, herbs. Yes, I herbs. Have, you will talk about it a little bit later, but just because we're talking about calendula, can you see it? It doesn't look so nice on this camera. I'm really sorry. Um, and you can see my fingers are oily from the oil that leaked earlier. <laughs> so. It doesn't really do anything, does it? But these are dried um, calendula uh, flowers. And yes, oh, they, they, smell I'm very sure they smell nice. Herb. Yeah, they smell very, it actually reminds me of hay a little bit. It smells very oh. herby, yeah. And it reminds me of hay too. But I must say, different suppliers, um, sometimes the herb smells yeah, different. Absolutely. Yeah, quite yeah. different. Yeah. So it, when you buy your herbs, um, then you can test out a few suppliers mm -hmm. and see which one you love the most. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Okay. Um, what's the next uh, category, Eliza? Um, next one, we can talk about aromaceuticals. Um, everybody, yeah, okay. everybody <laughs> loves nice smell, you know, and mm -hmm. scent. Um, I think it's it's very common everywhere. People just. First thing you do is when you get a jar of cream or you get something, you open up and you smell, you know. Mm. So, um, aromaceuticals, you can use essential oils, um, you can use absolutes, or you can use CO2 extracts. Mm -hmm. If you want to know more, uh, we also have a blog post on the differences, what is CO2 extracts. Maybe one of our colleagues can help to post the link mm -hmm. somewhere down at the side. <laughs> Somewhere. Oh, right. I, yes. I don't know. I think it goes down. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, then you, you'll be able to know uh, CO2 extracts comparatively with essential oils, are, they are more potent mm -hmm. and you don't need to use much of them. Mm -hmm. um, you only need to use 0 0.1 to maximum 0.5%. And that too, I think is actually quite high already. Mm -hmm. um, you do need to adhere to the dermal limits though. Um, these are all regulated. Um, mm -hmm. We will give you the guide. Um, what are the limits that you need to follow? We will teach you how to calculate the limits 
sorry, not the limits, calculate the allergens mm. to make sure that they are within the limits. And if they are not, then you just have to adjust uh, the percentage accordingly. Yeah. So that's yeah. also part in our diploma in our skincare, skincare formulation. And um, Denise has asked um, when the course will start um, registration. Yes. So uh, Denise, registration starts on the 26th of January, which is, which is the coming Tuesday. And you can enroll with us until the 2nd of February. So if you have not clicked by course by the 2nd of February, uh, that's too late. We will <laughs> close the card. Um, but you can then you get immediate access to the course once you've purchased it and you can start right away or you can leave it for a few weeks and then start from experience. I would say the sooner you start, the better, because you just, you know, you get into it and you're you're on a roll. Um, otherwise, you may forget. And then Christmas comes and you're like, oh, I did something earlier this year. Let me go. So I would say um, if you're planning to enroll, even maybe at the moment, if you don't have that much time because of lockdown and families at home and kids to look after, I would still start even if it's just a little amount you do every week even if it's just half an hour a week and then at some point later you you invest more time once you can but i would get started as soon as possible so once you purchase the course next week um whichever course you would prefer you can start right away everything is online um self-led self-paced someone else has uh, asked about this um earlier um so this will answer the question at the same time so you're your own boss once you enroll for the courses uh, you decide how much you want to study, um, how many hours a week, how many minutes a week, and how long you want to uh, take to complete this course. We have students that finish some of the courses within three, four months. We have students that take one and a half, um, two years. It really depends on you. Someone has asked about the validity of the course. So uh, it kind of depends what course and uh, to what conditions you purchase it but generally a diploma course a uh, single diploma course that you purchase will be valid for two years so that means for two years you have access to the entire course material to the libraries and all of these um to be honest with you if you invest about four hours a week you should be done within six months with the course yes. um and you can download so uh, all the pdfs and things like that you can download and you can keep forever um the videos they stay in the platform they're not downloadable but you can watch them for two years um until your um access um expires but um to be honest with you once you've worked through the entire course uh you have the downloadable materials and you've watched the videos once or twice then that will be sufficient information for you you will always remember once you read those notes again it will come back so that is really good amount of material that you will get out to to keep forever after yeah so i hope this answered a couple of questions we had with regards to the course and how it works and the good news is if you have more questions with regards to that on the 25th of january we have an admissions q a with elisiani and kelly and they will answer all those questions for you um so we can get back onto the topic of formulation and ingredients eliza yes. so um, <laughs> what is next okay oh, um we? yeah next we can touch a little bit on additives mm -hmm. um which uh is is a, is you can choose whether mm -hmm. when you put additives or not um additives are basically things like uh colorants uh where you suddenly want to make a purple cream maybe mm -hmm. like my purple scarf mm -hmm. <laughs> or you want to change the color you know to your preference but we do have um if you're thinking about that, um, by the way, we do have oils that have natural colors, which are beautiful, yeah. like Sivakton oil. You know, it gives a very beautiful light yellowy color, mm -hmm. yellowy, yellow color to yeah. very bright orange color. Yeah. So, um, or you can use um, any colorants that you mm -hmm. wish to. Um, the other thing about additives is also preservative. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where I've, I say it's a very fine line because preservative is also considered a functional mm -hmm. uh, because it's meant to preserve your formula, mm -hmm. um, but it can also be categorized as additive here. Okay. Um, can we move on to the next one? Yes, we can. Absolutely. Okay. So I think uh, we are reaching to the final one, uh, mm -hmm. where is aesthetics. Mm -hmm. um, Aesthetics is basically, you know, how you want to make your product look like. Mm -hmm. um, say, for example, recently I saw somebody um, posting their facial oil 
their rose facial oil with rose petals inside. Mm. Um, but it has to be in a very transparent looking glass so you can yeah. see the rose petal. And yes, so these are can you rose let me petals. smell the rose? Yeah, it would be so nice <laughs> if you could smell them. So these are rose petals, like single ones, dried. Yes. It's really not good on camera to see, but I wish you could smell them. Uh, I'm sure they smell heavenly. They are so gorgeous, yeah. But the thing about these aesthetics is um, not all rose petals can be used, for example, mm -hmm. if you choose. Um, because sometimes certain rose petals, if they are not properly dried, when you mm -hmm. put it inside the oil, um, after a while it can be soggy, it can lose its color. Uh, it's just not meant to be. Mm. So when you want to do aesthetics, you've got to be careful. Mm. And for natural skincare formulating, we always encourage um, the formulas to be kept in dark packaging or any packaging that protects the formula from the sunlight mm. because it is, it is um, sensitive to heat, sensitive to light. So um, these are the things that you will go through in the course mm. and it will make you understand why. Uh, you need to be careful of the packaging that you choose as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So um, I cool. think that covers about the types of uh, uh, sections of formulas mm -hmm. that we have. Um, we have the handbook of carrier oils for you um, when you enroll for the courses. Um, yeah. We also have the ingredients directory. I don't know how many hundreds we have, Hundred, close to 200 now. I don't know, but there is a lot of pages because I looked. I, I just looked at it the other day. There is plenty of pages in the ingredients library. Yeah. So um, the the documents uh, Eliza is mentioning right now, you get access to them when you purchase our courses. And there is one that's called the ingredients library, and it basically covers all the uh, basic ingredients as we just talked through, like foundation ingredients and aromaceuticals and um, you know additives, additives and things like that. And um, it basically covers all the classic botanical ingredients from mango butter to shea butter, jojoba oil, um, mm. calendula oil, um, olive oil, coconut oil. You mentioned it. It's all it's all the grapeseed oil. It's yes. all in there um, uh, with some really good instructions and some basic information. Um, the carrier oil handbook is very good for your carrier oils, but also you have space for your personal notes. Um, and we always have the philosophy if you don't write it down, it didn't happen. Yep. So we always say when you formulate, when you trial things, always write down your notes um, so that later on, once you've done your, your third or fourth version of it, you will remember what the first version was and maybe what didn't work and why it didn't work or what you liked and what you didn't like. You will forget about that once you've done three, four, five formulations. So it's always important to keep notes all the time. Um, yeah, and let's see if there's any questions. Or oh, someone has asked if, um, let me just pull this up as regards to the courses. Um, so like we said, you if you purchase a single course, it's valid for two years, which is the diploma courses. Um, and if you finish the diploma course before the two years, um, will you still be able to go back uh, and view the videos and course information? Yes, you are. So you have complete access for those two years. You can yeah. always go back. If you completed a module, you can always go back and review it and access all the materials and the videos that are in there. Um, absolutely. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, so Eliza, I think we covered um, some basic ingredients, right? Yes. And our, our categories of ingredients, like we defined them in our uh, courses. And um, like I mentioned for the starter kit, um, the Naissance uh, link is in here, our partner that we work with. And once you sign up for the courses, also it will be in your course material with what you need. Um, if you have specific questions and to what ingredients do I need, you want to purchase them before, um, email school at formulapotanical.com and they can email you the ingredient list as well. So you, if you want to purchase them before you start with your course, you can do that already as well. Um, but other than ingredients, um, what else do I need, Eliza? Other than ingredients, equipments. Equipment, okay. Yes. <laughs> so what do I need? Do I need big lab equipment to start or? No, no, you don't. Which, okay, let's see, which one shall we start with? Shall we start with um, beakers? Beakers, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, you need to put your ingredients in something, right? Mm. Um, you can you can get beakers like this. Sorry, yeah, okay. Um, I, I've got a few sizes, you know. Mm. Um, I like the small, tiny ones. Yeah. Um, 
I just bought 20 of them. Don't judge me. But I just keep on dropping them because they're just so small. Um, you can use beakers. Um, if you don't have beakers or you can't get any of them, you can use anything from your kitchen, which mm -hmm. is stainless steel um, or anything with, which is glass. Either these two. Um, please don't use plastic. Mm. Uh, no, no. It's, 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 it's really not recommended. Um, don't use aluminium as well because um, there might be some reaction with aluminium. Mm. So always stick to glass uh, type or stainless steel. Okay. Actually, I don't have it here, um, but the small beaker that you showed, um, you may be thinking, why do I need such a small beaker? But it's actually very useful if you have to mix really small amounts of uh, one or two ingredients together, like a bit of gum powder with glycerin or something, because yes. it's easier to get it out. And um, I found, uh, so this is probably for people that more live in the more Asian region or Middle East, I found beakers at Daiso the other day. I walked into Daiso yes. to buy gift bags and I found beakers for some reason. And I had to buy them. I didn't need beakers, but I had to buy them because I was so excited to see beakers at Daiso. And I bought a lot of small ones and they're really good to mix um, a small amount of ingredients. So I love them, yes. Um, yes. What else do we need other than beakers? Okay, um, we can talk about um, stirring rods. Mm -hmm. um, where you need to stir whenever you you want to mix things. Uh, this is my stirring rod. Oh, okay, yes, this very one. good. So, you know, basically you just put your ingredient in and then you can stir what... So, <laughs> yes, your infamous stainless steel chopsticks. Oh, yeah. Remember, so, it's either glass or... Oh, sorry, this side. Or stainless, stainless steel. steel. Yes. yes. So, um, I'm traveling at the moment, but obviously I wanted to still formulate while I'm away, while I'm traveling. So obviously looked at, you know, where can I get ingredients, very uh, ingredients, equipment very quickly and very easy. So these are stainless steel chopsticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the beakers, like I said, I found the Daiso by accident. Yes. Uh, these are stainless steel stop chopsticks, which some of you may have in your kitchen, very easy to um, sterilize and disinfect uh, and to use for your um, formulations. Obviously, I do not use them anymore for any food. So these are uh, skincare only chopsticks. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, but um, you can see you can get quite creative with, with what you use if you don't want to purchase, uh, for example, the glass glass rods right away. However, you can even find them on Amazon. They're not uh, that expensive. What happened, what I noticed with my glass rods, I'm a bit clumsy. And because they're round, they tend to roll off my, uh, my formulating table and I mm. broke quite a few of them, which um, those, if they break, they will <laughs> Which is yes. a good one for clumsy people like very me. Very good choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, if I may, if I may share this, you know, our colleague Brooke, she's a formulation tutor here. Um, in in one of the sessions, she actually showed that when she started, she used shot glasses. Brooke, yeah. if you are watching this, you know, I'm I'm commenting on you. <laughs> um, she used shot glasses to actually replace speakers because she doesn't have when she started, and yeah. she can use that to mix. So, um. Be creative, look around your kitchen, whatever you can use. But at one point in time, you would want to segregate them. Like what Ken says, yeah. um, don't mix them with um, with your kitchen stuff, with things that you used to eat. Try to keep them separate um, once you are on the roll of formulating. Okay. Yeah. Um, next one, yeah. whisk. A whisk. Mine is a very tiny whisk. To be honest, this one looks bigger than what it is. It's not that big. Um, but yes, I've got several of as well. It does look big. Yeah, no. Uh, okay. I think we got the same time. Look, we've got the we've got all we've got the plate as well here. Yeah, but yeah. but mine is only a one, two, three, four. I've got four, five, five lines. I think yours is, this is more. for heavy duty, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, it's it's very good because um, if you are making small um, no. batches, so it it just fits. And, yeah. and this works beautifully. You don't have to go and get any fantastic lab equipment. You will only do that yeah. when you're really serious into yeah. it. So. And I think I think that's a, just a very good point that you made there because in the beginning, you know, obviously you're very excited. You want to make all your products and you want to try all these amazing ingredients. And I think the key is in the beginning, start simple and start with small amounts as well. Like you don't want to make a five liter batch to start off with. You want to try... Yeah with a very small amount to see if you're happy with the end result. 
and you may want to vary that with a few other ingredients. And then once you're happy with the basic formulation where you use simple ingredients and probably cheap ingredients as well in the beginning, then gradually you will you know, add on and, and refine this formulation and add more and more things, right? Yes. Yeah. So, okay, we've got our whisk. What else? Uh, I, I didn't have my spatula, but I have this stainless steel measuring spoon. So this mm -hmm. is a small one where I, I use it to take up, uh, to measure my gums, not measure, uh, to scoop up my gums. Mm -hmm. You know, the small powders in very small um, quantity and yeah. th this works just fine. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have a kind of spatula-like, you know, those lab that you have. Yeah. Yeah. You can get from bakery shops, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think you can also get on Amazon, just like the whisk. Yeah. As well. I yeah I actually um, also I don't have it here right now but I also have a little uh, I was on one end it's a little spoon and on the other hand it's a spatula yes. and it's stainless steel in different sizes and also I managed to find it on Amazon very easily also eBay is sometimes quite good to be honest to find things um, but yeah I think equipment so far is, is quite easy to find and uh, the spatula end I quite like if you need to scrape you know something out the spoon is good to measure powders and also you can use it also to stir sometimes you know so it's quite good yes okay the next one i want to share is very important um but it's cheap is for you to get a good skill sorry this way yeah oh we've got twins yeah. <laughs> this this is a jewelry scale um it can measure up to two decimal points. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I would recommend you to check uh, before you buy because there was one time when I bought, I forgot to check. I just assumed that it has two decimal. Mm -hmm. Some suppliers, they sell it that only measures one decimal point. So try to get two decimal points because when you're working with very small batches, you do need two decimals, especially yeah. when you're measuring essential oils or vitamin E or anything that is yeah. only required in a very small yeah. amount. Yeah, so that's true. So sometimes you work with 0 0.1 grams or even um, sometimes if it's a gum powder and you make a small batch, it might be 0 0.03 or something like that. So um, make sure you've got two decimals for your scale and a, a jeweler scale um, will be able to do that. Just like Eliza said, just double check the specifications before you um, buy it. And those scales to start off with, they work great. Um, and how much did I pay for this one? Because I bought it here on Amazon.ae. Uh, it was 40 dirhams, which is around 9 euros, 8 euros, something like this. It's it, it's not expensive yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, obviously, then if you, um, you know, over time want to get a more professional scale, the price limits upwards is, <laughs> is nearly open-end. So they can get quite expensive, but yes. this is perfectly fine to start off with. They're exact enough to start uh, measuring for small batches as well. So this is quite good. Yeah. Yep. And please keep backup batteries. <laughs> yes, keep backup batteries. Nothing more annoying in the, if you're in the middle of the formulation and your batteries die and you don't have replacement. Yes. And you're in lockdown right. and you have to wait one week for them to be shipped. <laughs> I know. And can you imagine when you're just in the midst of doing it? Oh, okay, let's not get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the next one will be thermometer. Um, there are certain formulas where you do hot process methods, uh, which we will teach you. Yes, Ken is holding up his thermometer gun and I have mine in blue. Oh, I was... <laughs> so it's basically like, um, can you see? It's, it's got a laser and you are supposed to just uh, point it towards um, your ingredient, hold mm. it for maybe two, three seconds, and then it will be able to read uh, the temperature. Yeah. Uh, if you can't get this, and if you are the kind of person who likes to cook a lot, especially meat, when you like to bake, um, I understand that I, I don't bake meat for information, but I read, I read it somewhere that there is this thermometer with a stainless steel uh, pointer mm -hmm. stick. What do you call that? Something sharp where you can actually poke into the meat yeah, to a, check the temperature. A... What is it called? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, I hope you get the idea. You know, it's it's like you just imagine that this is stainless steel. It's very yeah. sharp end, and it's got a, a, a round clock like this, you know, which is actually measuring the temperature. So you just I don't know what is it called. Meat, <laughs> meat thermometer. I don't know what it's called. Yeah. 
So if you have that, you can use that. But again, please make sure that it's only meant for your formulation mm -hmm. eventually. Mm -hmm. And you can use it to measure the, the temperature if you use a hot process to heat up yeah. anything. So thermometer is important because um, there are different phases that we require... Um, Yes, food thermometer. Thank you. That's the one. <laughs> so or or dispersion. A meat thermometer. Yes, thank, thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's the one. Um, just because we just finished uh, talking about the scales, let me just pull up this question from from Angela, which I think is a very good question, and she's asking how to measure bigger batches. So, um. What we do at Formula Botanica, and because I've seen also some comments, which I've lost now, because as you write comments, they scroll. So um, it's, yeah. it's difficult to keep track of it as I'm talking. But I've seen some comments about metric measuring and, and non-metric, et cetera, because obviously our students from all over the world. So um, what we teach in our diploma for organic skincare formulation, and I think that's something very important, and um, we use percentages for our formulations. That way, you are able to very easily scale up or down depending on the batch size that you need. So for example, if I have a formulation, let's make it easy with 50% rosehip oil and 50% blackberry seed oil. Oops. And I'm making 20 grams of this mixed oil. So 50-50%, you will know it's 10 grams and 10 grams, very easy. But now I want to make one kilogram of this um, oil because I've got lots of customers. Uh, very easy from the percentages, you can calculate that you need 500 grams and 500 grams. So um, we use percentages because it's just so easy to scale up or down your batch sizes and you can calculate exactly what weight you need. Someone was worried about using metrics. I would say don't worry about it because you will get used to it. Yes. You will go through it in the course on how to calculate them and um, you will get used to it. Yeah. So, so far, I think all of our um, US students have managed to, uh, um, to use metric measurements. Yeah. Yes. Okay, then we've got our thermometers. What else do we need? Uh, pH strips. pH strips. Yes. Um, <clears throat> this is especially crucial when you're making formulas with water. Um, if you are just making formulas without water, which is just purely oils and butters, you don't have to worry mm -hmm. because you can't measure pH in oils and butter. So the pH strips that you can get is like, the one I have is like this. Yeah. I, always, I don't know which way to go. Now, this is in um, variation of one, which mm -hmm. means it goes like from zero to 14. Um, mm -hmm. You also have uh, pH strips, which is which goes in 0 0.5. Mm -hmm. um, where it's narrower and you are mm -hmm. able to see, uh, where you're able to measure it uh, slightly more accurate. Yeah. But when you're starting out, um, this would be, this would be recommended. Do. Yeah. yeah. Some people, they ask whether can they use litmus paper? And this is very, very popular among soap makers. Mm -hmm. I make soaps as well. Um, I've been making soaps for more than 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, we do use litmus paper when we started out. That's fine. But when it comes to skincare formulation, um, it is not accurate. So mm -hmm. I really would not recommend you to use litmus paper. Just spend a little bit of money, you know, and you'll be able to, to see and experience for yourself how yeah. your formulas turn out. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay. And um, Margaret is asking, where is the best place to buy the different oils and equipment? So Margaret, it really depends on where you are in the world. Um, mm -hmm. Like we mentioned already, we work with Nason's, um who have produced a starter kit for our um, ingredients. They ship to nearly all countries in the world. Um, we do have two Amazon storefront pages as well, which I'm sure the link is already in the chat somewhere. If not, I'm sure Kelly is happy to post the links back in the chat box. So we've got an Amazon UK and an Amazon US storefront. And I think there we have some of the ingredients, um, not all of them, but some. And we mainly also have equipment uh, suggestions in there. Keep in mind with equipment, it is suggestions. It doesn't mean that you should get this particular model or brand necessarily, yeah? Um, and maybe like you've seen in, this, in the stream as well, you can get quite creative with things you probably have at home already. Um, you just have to make sure that you keep it exclusively, exclusively for your skincare products 
and um, sanitize them appropriately. Um, which maybe, um, Eliza, let's see if I find this comment again. Someone did ask about um, sterilizing or sanitizing. And um, here, it is from Catherine. And I think this is the question. Um, does 70% isopropyl rubbing alcohol make oils cloudy if not fully dried? How long does it take to air dry? So first of all, what do you use the isopropyl alcohol for? Uh, sorry, what do I use? Yes. I, yeah, I use it to sterilize the equipment. To sterilize, yeah. So, yeah. and I think that's the um, that's the point here. So, um, please make sure it's fully dried because yeah. you don't want to you don't want to use it while it's still wet. So make sure it it is dried off because also that way you make sure it's it's sanitized properly. Yes. Um, how long does it take to air dry? I think it really depends on where you are. Um, mm. If you're in a very dry, hot weather like Ken is, probably it'll dry faster than if you're in a hot and humid country like I am. Um, mm. Like for me, I will always prepare the equipment at least an hour before. It may not take that long, but it's just my personal preference. Yeah. Um, and um, you, you just need to check it for yourself. Mm. You just spray and then you just leave it. You know, check every 10, 15 minutes and see to make sure that it's fully dry. Yeah. You can put it in a um, a place where the ventilation is good, then mm. maybe it can dry faster. Yeah. But the point is, it needs some time to sterilize the equipment. So don't don't rush through this sterilization process because it's very yeah. important. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I think, I'm trying to think now, I think when I formulate, the first thing I do is actually sterilize the equipment. That's yeah. one of the first things I prepare is the equipment and only then I get my uh, ingredients and yeah. my formulation sheets and my notebooks and all the other things out. So usually by the time I'm done with all the other things, yeah, I've never had to wait for it to 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 dry. It was already dry by then. So um, yeah, so keep an eye. But it also depends how much rubbing alcohol you use on it, right? <laughs> if yes. You, if you drain it, then obviously it will take, it will take longer. Yes. Um, what else is there? Any? Let me see. If there's any other questions? Or meanwhile, if we shall move on, um, yeah. Is there any other equipment that I need to start off with, Eliza, that you would recommend? Um, I think just one more thing, which you can also get from your kitchen, um, is a bain marie. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have to specifically buy a bain marie. Mm -hmm. You can actually create your own. Mm -hmm. by just taking a pot that you have in your kitchen. Um, why we need a bain marie is because we always use a, a double boiler to mm -hmm. heat up the ingredients. This is because we want to avoid the ingredients from getting burnt. Yeah. Um, so it, it should be gentle heating. Mm -hmm. So it's like melting chocolates. You know, you don't melt the chocolates directly. Yeah. So you use the same method. So you can put the beaker into the pot and heat it gently. That's where the thermometer comes in, where you have to check to make sure that the temperature goes up to where it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. and then you remove it. So, you see, you you don't need to go and buy all these things. You can create them in your own kitchen. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'm, I'm actually still using the self-made version of the memory. So, I'm using the Me pot too. and a, a glass bowl. It's on, on top. It's just so much uh, so much easier, you know, yes. to, to, uh, to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, not that much easier necessarily, but I never felt the need that I need to buy a uh, memory specifically because it works very well like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can see you can work around things um, quite easily in, in the beginning. Um, so yeah, is there anything else that you would recommend or need in terms of equipment, ingredients to cover equipment? I, I think those are the basic ones that yeah, I remember I that so. I need. Yeah. yeah. Then... I mean, um, maybe one thing to mention, but you will then need as well is some sort of... Um, containers, um, because obviously yes. you want to store your products that you make, you want to store them away. So it might be worth, you know, getting, um, you can also get them on Amazon, you can get them in in, in shops, you uh, everywhere really. Um, just a container of your preference to store your samples and your first kind of uh, formulations, but chances are you will use them up very quickly, especially in the beginning, because you're so excited, you want to try everything. Uh, you will yes. try many different ones, and but you will make small amounts. Um, but it's also nice if you get smaller containers because you can give a trial to friends or family. You can say, look, I made this, give it a try or let me know what you think. So um, I think you're, uh, you will notice that 
uh, you will have friends contacting you very frequently to ask if you formulated something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite good. Um, so, well, um, I hope that I will see a lot of you um, signing up next week when our enrollment opens on the 26th of January, Tuesday. Um, our enrollment will open. You can sign up for um, any course that you like, really, that is in our portfolio. So uh, obviously very popular is our Diploma in Organic Skincare Formulation, our foundation course, our bestseller, our most visited course. Um, overall, we have taught over 11,000 students from over 117 countries, 170 countries at Formula Botanica. And um, we're very excited and very proud of our diverse student community as well. So I hope that um, I will see you enroll next week. I will see your names um, showing up once enrollment starts. Um, we still have more activities for you in the next couple of days. So um, if you keep an eye out um, the next two days over the weekend, you will see some lovely um, videos from our graduates um, that will share some information and in their journey with you. And I'm actually, I can't wait to see, uh, to see them as well tomorrow when the first one comes on. And then on the 25th of January, so just one day before enrollment, there will be a live um, Q&A session on admissions uh, with Elisiani and Kelly, where you can ask all your questions on how do I enroll, um, how do I pay, um, those sort of things. They will be happy to answer that for you. Um, and then 26th of January, set a reminder in your calendar, enrollment opens uh, for the courses, and it will close on the 2nd of February. So if you haven't enrolled within that week, you will need to wait, unfortunately, until we open again. Um, yes. But I hope to see you there. Um, I hope that you are excited to start with the course. Um, it is really, truly great to formulate your own products. Um, I have started with that. Um, when was that? I enrolled for the for Diploma in Organic Skincare Formulation. Uh, I think it was already 2021, in uh, 2019 in September, I believe. Um, and I thought, in my head, I thought, oh, let me, you know, I've got two years to complete the course. Let me do it slowly. And then six months later, I finished it because I got so into it and so excited about formulating and trialing. And it's so much fun. Um, so I would recommend, you know, take your time if you need to, if you do have the time available, because some of you may have in the situation, then, you know, go for it and, and use the opportunity, uh, learn something new, get excited about formulating, exchange your experiments with, with the community. And I really hope to, to see you starting next week, becoming students with us. Yes. And, um, Thank you, Eliza, for this informative um, session and all your tips and advice. And um, if you want to make sure you don't miss the registration, the pre-registration link is in the chat, which you can use here. And that way you will make sure that you don't miss out on the pre-registration. Um, the Nason Starter Kit is in the um, comments as well. And um, yeah, I hope to see you next week. Like I said already, don't forget the other live sessions and have a good evening and goodbye and stay happy and stay healthy and stay safe. <laughs> yes, stay safe, everyone. Goodbye. goodbye. <laughs>